How America handles threats and relations with other countries seems to stay under the political microscope, from war raging between Russia and Ukraine to ongoing issues at our southern border. Senator Cotton offers his analysis on past mistakes and potential solutions on U.S. foreign policy. There's a lot of history in this book, going back 100 years, the progressive era and Woodrow Wilson coming forward to uh, the presidencies of Barack Obama and Joe Biden. Um, so reading uh, more deeply about the history uh, of the progressive left and their views on American power and also how we've turned it around at various times, whether it was Eisenhower taking over in the middle of the Korean War, Nixon, the Vietnam War, Reagan, when Jimmy Carter had brought American power to a previous low. Uh, wasn't just interesting in itself, but, but it also helps a lot in my day job. Cotton tackles a number of topics, including the United States chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan. I think it's a combination of President Biden's insecurity and his rank incompetence that led to the collapse of Afghanistan in August before we even got all of our people out. So what should have happened? Certainly the president should have not have taken the precipitous steps that he did that ensured failure. For instance, closing down Bagram Air Base before we had all of our personnel out. The senator ties that moment from August of 2021 to one of today's most pressing international issues, Russia's war with Ukraine. Cotton writes, Biden didn't just leave our people behind during his retreat from Afghanistan. His weakness enticed Vladimir Putin to invade Ukraine. But Joe Biden didn't invade Ukraine. Vladimir, Vladimir Putin did. So is it fair to completely blame our president for what's going on uh, right now between those two countries? Well, I don't completely blame President Biden. Obviously, Vladimir Putin bears the brunt of the blame for the war of aggression in Ukraine. But it's equally clear that deterrence failed. I mean, Vladimir Putin has now invaded Ukraine twice under two Democratic presidents. He didn't invade during a Republican president. Cotton argues the Democrats are participating in what he calls decline by design. Are you insinuating that Democrats, progressives want a weekend country? I mean, think about the, you know, your colleagues, the Democratic colleagues that you've worked with before. Do you think they want a weakened country? It's the, the genuine belief that American power is not likely to lead to strength, safety, and prosperity, but rather to war and oppression and arrogance, that the world would be a better place if America would simply pull in its horns and atone for its sins and become a more normal nation. That's what I mean when I say it's declined by design and the intentional sabotage of American power. Not that progressives are, again, necessarily anti-American, though plenty are, but they have deep ambivalence about America and American power and its role in the world. Cotton maintains the United States should continue to provide military aid to Ukraine. He sees it as a major deterrent to one of America's biggest threats, China. Strength and resolution with clarity uh, about our intentions will lead to peace. It won't lead to war. Closer to home, Cotton advocates for a complete overhaul of the U.S. southern border. Apprehensions hit a record 2.4 million in the past year, and the Title 42 policy allowing the government to quickly expel migrants under COVID rules could end soon. The overhaul starts with America's asylum policy. We want to offer refugee and asylum status to people with legitimate fears. You know, if they fear that they're going to be persecuted because of their Christian faith or if they fear that they're going to be persecuted because they're a woman in their home country. Those are legitimate asylum and refugee claims. But coming here because you simply want a better job and a better life, that's not, that's not suitable for our refugee and asylum system. Those kinds of people should be coming through regular immigration systems for people who want to immigrate here and become citizens and become part of this country. Only the strong could serve as a potential pre-presidential run memoir. Although 2024 is not something the Arkansas Republican can commit to right now. Don't have any big announcements about 2024. We've closed the chapter on that uh, uh, so far. Maybe not closing the book for the future, but you know we have young boys, uh, seven and five years old, and that's just a particularly challenging age for dad to be on the road, you know, six or seven days a week for two years. Although Senator Cotton told me he enjoyed being out on the trail campaigning for midterm candidates around the country, it wasn't his full-time job. He added that if his children were a bit younger or older, his 2024 decision could have been different. Matt Gelka, CBN News.